Hello. Good morning, good afternoon, where you at around this morning. Um, hope you're doing well out there. Usually I, I have something to come across my mind and I think about I think about uh, certain topics and sometimes they don't get pretty popular and sometimes it get I guess with some people but I, I, I decide something I'm going to discuss about that most people don't really talk about and talk about the name of Yeshua to some people call him Jesus and I'm going to tell you and it, whoever you choose it, but it's the one that died on the cross the one that paved the way for the sins the one the one that put demons to flight the one that in the end is going to put the devil in the lake of fire the one that that brings life, the one that brings healing, the one that brings deliverance, the one that, um, in my personal life, he saved my he saved my life, he saved my soul. This is just being real. This is really as it come. Um, he saved me from word curses, curses that were per put on me by people and I believe those were curses to the point that it could have cost me my life and some like, like some people wrestling with depression depression leads to think about you don't want to be in this world no more um, you can get that low there's people that get that get that hurt there are people that that they think like they have it all, but they don't have him. Because even with all the money that they have, even all the fame that they have, they're still not happy. And you find somebody, young people, children, the earliest children to latest as elders, take their life because they couldn't handle the things of this world. I, I could say at one point I could have been one of those victims but uh, deep in my heart word curses were put on me I was labeled labeled it and I believe in the labels I never would really stand up for myself because I took it on like it was a punishment of, of the world it was G it was Yeshua basically took the words off of me it is Jesus that that saved my life when I thought about put thought about putting a gun to my head at one point in my twenties. It was Jesus that saved me when I when I messed around with the Ouija board. It was Jesus that saved me. It was Jesus that saved me uh, from when I felt the true depression, and you can feel the spirit of death trying to. Come, come, climb the tent. Come to take you. It was God, with all His mercy and all His love, that put me in the path of someone to show me His kingdom. There's a lot of people out there that is, is feel like they're excluded from this world. This can be a cold world. This is a cold world. It's going to get colder. Um. It's gonna get colder, and uh, this is my story. You know, I, I've you know I went through it for the first 35 years of my life, and I have a few friends, like most people do. But it's like, you know, one thing about it: the, the people you seek for friendship, this, this is the people you seek accept you and love you. Sometimes it don't always go that way. But if you're an individual out there that, that has suffered and feel like 
people you know all your life don't never accepted you. People you that you went to school with never accepted you. People in your church never really acknowledge you. People, people along the way, because they're just, just another. You ain't got nothing. You broke, whatever. You look funny, or whatever particular reason. Let it be known that even the world might say you don't have the charisma, you don't have the class, you don't have the status, you don't have the education, you don't have the materialistic things of money and fancy cars and fancy clothes, and you don't look a certain way, you don't fit what would attract millions of thousands of people. But let me, let me know if I can t say it to these individuals, like my, and I, like I'm speaking out with you, t talking to myself. You have value. You have value in this planet. You may not be in a position right now, like thousands and millions of other people, because of the economy. You may not have two two up. You may have not two cents. You may not you may not live in the best area of the neighborhood. You may not have the best home. You may you, you, you might be dealing with trauma that people still mock you and they still take advantage of you. And they, some people wounded you and they hurt you. But let it be known that when, whatever people around you, people you, that acknowledge you, people who never really want to love you and like you the way you want to be loved and liked, it doesn't matter because Jesus knows that's what to his father Yahweh Shai but known as Yah our mighty heavenly father knowledge is you when other people don't know you may not be a popular person on TV social media you may not even be, people don't even know who you are. And, and maybe, it could, and it, then again, it probably be, be good. Because the more you well known, the more devils you got to fight. The more well known you are, the more things open up, the enemy comes at you. And God kind of shields us from that. He only going to let so many people in, in your corner. Even if he was someone that you, you live in the same town or live in the same city, he only going to let so many people around you. So if you feel like you're alone, you're not really alone. If you feel like you're isolated, you're not really isolated. You have a you have a kingdom that surrounds you. Don't that doesn't judge you on what your status is. You have a kingdom around you, whether it's the Father, through His Son, through His Holy Spirit, through all the angels in the angelic kingdom. Yeshua's kingdom, Jesus' kingdom, the one that died on the cross. Let me specifically say this. The one that died for our sins, the one that 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 took the most brutal blunt coming through a man's body, to, to for his his body go to the ground, his soul goes to hell to redeem and goes back up to he heaven on the mercy seat. That's the one, the one that no the one no matter how egregious your sin is, how disgusting, how despiteful your sin is. All you have to do is open up the heart and say, please forgive me for my, I, I did not know. That's the Jesus. Maybe you wouldn't real. maybe the world calls you ugly. Maybe the, the world said you, 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 not, you don't look smart enough. Maybe the world said that you look fun, funny and familiar. You don't meet our status and they mock you. And thousands and hundreds of thousands mock you and laugh at you. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what the world thinks. It's matter what he thinks. Because whoever controls eternity, who's ever in eternity with him, 
them the ones that love you. The ones in that kingdom of heaven, them the ones that will acknowledge you. The ones that dwell with him in the kingdom, that love you, the love that you would, not too many people on this earth will give you that type of love, is the kingdom of God, the, the most high, through his son Yeshua, better known as Jesus. That, that name, that the one that sets you free demonically from taxing your mind. The one that, that tapped your body in your mind. That's the one you need to worry about. That's the one that you need, need that, that loves you and cares you. When you when you don't look your best when you wake up in the morning <laughs> to, to however you look when you leave your house. No matter what your personality is, whether you're an extrovert, introvert, when, when your own family, when your own friends, don't, people you've known all your life, they don't really pay attention to you. They know you, but they don't know you. And you feel like you feel alone. You can, you, you, you can have all and be isolated. You can be well known and these people are, are well known to have money and just they isolate themselves from the world. And it's like what? And then they say, "Wow, man, this person have everything. What, what made them take their own life? They lack one thing. They didn't get a connection with him. Because he would give them a love that no, nothing on this earth, no one, not one person, would give them all the love. It's the only through the Father, through His Son Jesus. He's the only one that can give you that type of love." He's the only one that when, when he brought, brought, brought to every individual, as well as myself, through our mother's womb. No one promised to say that it was going to be peaches and roses. It's going to be, it's going to be pins and needles, and razor sharp things that come along the way in life. You're going to get cut, wounded, and hurt. They're going to be, and sometimes stones will come at you, the arrows will come at you. People's work in this in stones and arrows could be like words. But but I assure you, when you feel like you're bound alone, maybe your finances not be might be there, maybe your living situation not might be there. But remember one thing, you still got breath in your body. Your finances, your situation, whatever, your health situation, your finances situation may not come come right in a second maybe not in a minute not in the hour but when you call on his name over time he'll change it there was a time in my life you know I was trying to seek validation from people because you want to be liked Sometimes the people you seek validation is meant that you, you wasn't because you don't know what's in their path and what's down deep down in their heart what they resent you if you, you start gaining popularity what they like you if the blessings turned around on you and this could be somebody in your own family it could be someone that you've grown, grown up since you were kids that really hurts me. Someone you grown, you 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 ran through the struggle with. You 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 became bonded with. You become closer with. But it happens. Um. You know, I I, I come to YouTube because I said it's not really. I I'm not gonna get a hundred thousand viewers. I'm realistically, some people if people look for entertainment, people look for something, but they never, not too many people on social media look for someone that's heartfelt. It's not too many people want to relate to reality. You, you don't get no views when it comes to something like that. You don't get that many views. You don't get that many likes when you do that stuff. But you know what? That's okay because if I reached a few, if I stopped somebody from Thinking less than 
and they thought about maybe one second, maybe I shouldn't be on this earth no more. If they just heard this message and God said and had them turn to my video, that's all what matter. If I don't make a thousand views, it, it, it don't matter. If it don't make a thousand, if it's like a thousand, a hundred thousand dollars doing this YouTube, it don't matter. Because what really matters is the truth and reality. And that's something that it seems like it's getting drowned out. You, you get you get you get demonized for it. Your algorithm slow down because you speak the truth. But there's there's a segment of people that need to know because they try to seek validation from people. You don't need to seek validation. I learned, learned, learned that a long time ago. You don't need to see well there. When you got the one that loves you the most. That put, but according to the book of Jeremiah, knew you in your mother's womb. That's the one that, that wake you up every morning, make sure you lay down at night, and he will push off the demonics from harming you while you, to protect you while you sleep, to protect you when you're on the road, protect you if you have work in school, protect you wherever you go, you go grocery, anything in your everyday life. That's the one you need to be concerned. Please him. Don't worry about pleasing anybody else. Because he will all he because he have a he have a love. Jesus, Yeshua. I had to say that the one who went on the cross, that's they tried to spell. The one they tried right out of existence, because I seen it over social, some people on social media, but they never can. But but the ones who dispel them can never can figure out who's going to make evil stand down through that name. See, they want this. They want this, They want. They want to dismiss miss him and they mock him. But yet, they don't know who they mocking. They don't know who they laughing at, because if their life was required today and they leave that earthly that the earthly body who would they stand and stand in front of because if you got it if you got the light and the bright and you got the dark and 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 it kicked at the the, the, the the darkness you you will see and it's, it'll be too late you'd be too late to chunk up and say oh I believe now I believe now Oh, I, I see that there's a. Oh, I see that there's an afterlife over here. Yeah, you in the afterlife because you left your body. Death took death. The death spirit came and got you. So people need to think about that when they ridicule Jesus, Yeshua, when they mock at him, because he can tell the darkness stand down. He 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 or she got can they got more life on this earth. And he does it every day in eternity. Whether you believe it or not. Some of you was not was supposed was a, was supposed to be here. All of us. Because we all got a timetable. This is the reality. Every day you see, you see someone leaving this world. Young, old, very young, young as a baby, all the way to an, el an elderly person. Even though you said with well, an elderly person, they well, that guess they about their time is up. But when you you see some elderly people living up past a hundred, we live in the days that there are you see elders that live past a past a hundred years old. You figure by a hundred, they about ready to go to the Lord. Not not all, not all of them. So you never know what age is going. So you, and this is the time we live in. It. Even some of them going to be around when she, when Jesus and she come back into the earth. And you seeing somebody 19, 20 years old leaving this world, young, good looking young person, have everything going for themselves, and bam, they smart, they in college, they're young, they're athletic, and all of a sudden they're gone in the prime of their life. Life ain't guaranteed, people. Life ain't guaranteed. But I, but I would suggest people to get on the right side. Because if 
if someone isn't praying for you and interceding for you and you're not praying and you don't repent and you wake up and you and you eyes and you look at something most the most hideous creatures and demonic spirits and Satan's behind them saying welcome to my kingdom and they're gonna torment you for eternity and you everything you feel in this body everything you feel in, we go through colds, aches, flus season we feel all seasons of weather you feel it in your body as you age in, age in this body imagine your your soul going through that because they said once you step out there 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 is to say that whatever I heard people say this that whatever your soul feels ten times of what you what you were in your earthly body so whatever you feel in your flesh it's just temporal what you feel in the soul and your spirit because you are make, make a three minutes um, the spirit man soulish man and your fleshly man your fleshy man and what like my fleshy man what you can see or what you can see on your body as you watch this watch but you need to think about this that you can't you can't dabble in sin forever. This you can't do the same thing you do forever. Change is gonna come. But it's, but if someone come in your life with an option of light, say come on come on over to the one that can give you light. The one that 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 died for your sins. The one that can heal you while you're in the land of the living, set you set you free, emotionally free, generationally free. Put a peace and happiness in you that you never experienced in, in your life, whether you're a teenager or an adult. You could have you could have been through, or an elder. You could have experienced some type of pain that was so traumatizing, you still feel that pain from the time you was probably a baby to a child, and you still remember it. Because it's, it's something that has never been resolved. Somebody could have come along and hurt your life. It could have been someone. If, if you're a young lady, it could have been a, your first boyfriend. If you're a young man, it was your first girlfriend. It could have been your, some parent in your life. Someone didn't love you. Your grandmother could have hurt you. Anybody. It could have been some grandfather. Anybody. That didn't give you the love and acknowledgement as a child that touched some part of you that was wounded and you carry it and you carry it even though you carry it to your adulthood but let me tell you something God can heal that wound He can touch an area and love you in an area in your life that you've never been loved just I'm being real Whatever, when, you, when you're going through your depressing times when you're going through the most harshest time in your life, when you feel like everything is so overwhelming, everything it, it is out of whack, everything, it, you, you just like, this is it. When everything, it could be a, a virus, a disease, or, I mean, it could be like you're about to get evicted. It could be the worst of the worst of the worst. I mean, you could be like you're going about to go to jail or prison. I mean, think of anything worse, but he can get you out of it. And you can't see no way. We've all been in a situation where we couldn't see no way because we, we was under worry, dress, and stress. But he said, peace be still. I got this. And then within 24 hours, within an hour, within a minute, situations changed around. Who can do that? But see, if the devil does it, he's going to require you to do something for him. He's going to require your soul. He can give you the fast riches in life. He can give you the fast fame. He can bring the fastest people, the the, the, the people that can come like they come like light, but really they they from the darkness. To take and zap whatever it is that God has placed around you. He can give you the friends, and, but but they won't care about you because that because they was assigned to you to, to make sure they carried out the devil's will destroy you mentally psychologically take you out and eventually you take 
yourself out. He's a destroyer. He don't care nothing about you. That's what he, his, his job because you you were made in, in the image. To say got nothing to do with skin color, ain't got nothing to do with what religion you come from. It has nothing to do. It has nothing to do with who your name, who your background, how much education, all the things that this earth has has made you made you so you could be the richest of the rich. I come from a family of wealthy to a family that's in poverty. He doesn't like you because you are the image of which it was supposed to at some point become a threat to his kingdom. You can start out bad and God sh shows you, reveal you to who he is and he turn around and do something good for the Lord. Now you become the threat to his kingdom. That's how Satan works. Why is someone not telling the truth like this? Why are not, not some pastors telling you the truth like this? And sometimes, whether you try to, if you're a young woman or a young man trying to seek validation by having so many sex partners, to seek that love, but you just, you, you, some people they zap whatever out of you. But at the same time, it could be just sex. Sex was not designed for between two people just to be just sex. When you, when you have sex with somebody, you, you give your part of yourself to somebody and you bond with somebody. So why should you bond with sexually who you sex? That's why he put it in marriage. But today's world, they mock it. Oh yeah, go out and have as many women as you want, man. If you're a man, you know, yeah, go ahead. Just put it down with all these women. If you're a woman, put it down on all these men. But and, and, and again, you're going to get tired. Because somewhere along the line, you're going to get drained. And then at, at some point along the line, you're going to figure out the people that you mess with really didn't care nothing about you. On this for men and women. They, they always want something from you. When they find... Well, once they got it from you, you're disposable. They learned that from Satan. They learned that from the devil. Once the devil uses you for something, like a tool, he disposes you. Man picked up that nature of him. Women take up that nature from him. Man and women. Get what you get. Because, see, he's self-centered. It's all about I, I, I. And even you see the most attractive per people... The most witty, charming people that they use their witty and charm, their charisma for bad, that's dangerous. That's a dangerous person for the bad, for, for Satan. It's about me, it's about I, it's about how much money and gain is I want. If that means I got to step over people, hurt people, drive people away, make them feel like they, they're less than. A, a book. They, they, they're going to exalt themselves. They, they're going to exalt themselves over people. You have people that do that. Do you? But you don't want to be like that. Because if you you like that, even though you gain the things on, in this world by crafting, cunning, scamming, scheming, and you never repent, and you hurt people, you're going to pay a price. Because you don't know. Because once the devil said, thank you for doing what you're doing, you done hurt and wounded other people, and God, then you didn't seek rep repentance from the Lord, then the Lord said, you go ahead and take him. You take her. And, and sometimes God will be so willing to send people your way to warn you, to tell you, stop what you're doing. Change your way. And you choose not to change your ways, you don't know. An illness can come, a natural disaster can come, man-made or unnatural, and boom, you're gone. You're out your body. Your loved one's crying over at, uh, at, at your grave. You, you somewhere in the spirit, you, you in the internal realm. That's reality. And they don't know if you're in heaven, and they don't know if you're in hell. Now, some people want to, want to believe they, there's no such thing, but yet, I say to skeptics, you haven't been over to that realm. 
and the devil will laugh and say, and both, when basically he laughs, so the greatest misception that don't believe anything until you leave your earthly body. Even you, and if you're an atheist, it's going to happen. If you're agnostics, it's going to happen. No matter what you, whatever you was thought of, whatever you're trying to figure out, and, and with some of you, because there was a one time you had a relationship with God, but you, 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 you come in a satanic mind thinking that God needs to come to you. God don't need to come to you. Jesus don't. You need to come to Him through His Son Jesus. See, man get kind of puffed up when they get money, they get status, and they get some kind of ego. And the greatest thing that took down man, that took down Lucifer, that the turn into Satan, was his I, I, well, he need to come to, well, I'm, I'm going to turn against, against him because I, God didn't answer my prayer. So basically, he can piss, you know, I'll go to the other side. I'll worship some other deity. And that'd be the biggest mistake in your life, your eternal life. Not just your life. But your eternal life. Because along you don't know how many years you got in your earthly body. And you turn against his the, the, the creator through his son, the one that died for your sin. That's a big mistake. That's the greatest mistake you can ever be. Because that basically say that you put you put you really put your hands in the hands of the enemy. Now he can take your life. So say he said, I got him, let him keep let him and her keep doing my destruction. And at some point, in all these celebrities and all these high influential people who've done darkness, they they they've done sorcery, they've done witchcraft. My suggestion, your day is coming. That Satan's gonna require you. He's gonna say, Thank you, you did did much corruption. Come join me, I'll give you a kingdom. I'm going to give you a fiery kingdom. I'll put put his fiery crown and, and put you in a place of 100,000 degrees serenite that you, you can't breathe, where the worms don't die. You smell, you think you smell, you think it's the horrible thing, you stench you smell in the earth. Ten times you're going to smell that stench in hell. Ten times. You're going to see some creatures you ain't never picture. You think science fiction. That's why science fiction show these creatures. Because they're going to show you what you're going to be down in hell with. This is to my atheists and to my agnostics people. You, see, you know how the movies and you've been entertaining all these years? Where do you think they got that from? The, the superhero movies? Where do you think they got that from? They got that out of the pit of hell. And if you leave your body, you might see something that you, when you was up on earth watching at the movie theater, you saw something. And it's going to be right down in the pit of hell. Tor tormenting you. Look like some of the most hideous thing you've ever, ever seen. You won't see something beautiful and glorious and light. You won't get a chance to see Jesus. You won't get the chance to see his angels. You won't get a chance to see nothing. That would astound you. All of them. You're going to be, when you see Satan Satan's kingdom, you're going to be scared. You're going to be afraid. And you, the most horror in your life, you're going to fear it from your soul to your spirit. That's true. So, it's, it's time for me to keep it real. So you can turn on God. You can turn, you can, and I suggest you do not blaspheme his spirit. Because that's unforgivable. You, I wouldn't do that if I was you. Because that's, that's can, can, condemnation. And for some of these people that are supposed to be with God, that get these, that's leading out frost prophecy, where his spirit never told you something, you're in trouble. The ones that, and it never come to pass, and you, you're working for the enemy. Some of these people that's been giving out false prophecy that never came to pass. That God never gave you through His Son Yeshua. You're in trouble. You don't take no position. Say something unless He give it to you. 
and you make sure he give it to you because that's how Satan has tricked some of you make you think that was God and you didn't wasn't fast you in during the fasting you didn't fast or didn't seek that information you didn't wait until the king and king and king and lord of lords give it to you personally a lot of people from that going to, going to be down in the pit of hell too they're playing with God they compromise with his word this is the truth and, you, and somebody might not like this video they might they might mock this video laugh at this video say ah that guy oh he's something he's, he's been trained to okay oh you funny looking call me whatever you want to call me you can dispute it but you can't dispute death you can't dispute destruction you can't dispute what's going the things that's happening in the earth that's happening to people all of a sudden they strike down with something and they don't know what it is they might open up a door this house when sin, they say sin it open up a door oh it opens a door and all kind of disease some illness and disease and you tapped it with some something somebody that you never it was never in your bloodline this happens so I suggest so I suggest I'm, I'm nobody I'm not a prophet I'm not a bishop, I'm not a pastor, I'm not an evangelist. I'm just something that I can tell from my experience. I have seen the Bible come to life. I've experienced the Bible coming to life. I have been delivered from the things that some people you have read in, in that Bible. The Bible is more real than, than you think it is. Don't let people tell you it's just an allegory glory book is a major favorite that's a lie out of the pit of hell it's real because I experienced it I have experienced being delivered from spirit from demons from demonic spirits I have experienced healing I have witnessed people being healed I have witnessed people get delivered I've heard things with my own ears this is my testimony that those that those those sixty six books and more have spoke upon. I know that Jesus is real. How did I know that Jesus is real? And I know that the demonic kingdom is real. How do I know? How do I know this? Because let me tell you, let me tell you how I know about because I'm giving God the glory first. I'm giving the God before I tell you about the demonic kingdom. Before my father passed away, Jesus allowed me to witness it, it, witness things, his, his kingdom in the spirit. Before my father, and I believe why my father passed me, let me know, because the relationship my father and I have with, through the father to his son. And the time when I remember that dream when I was 20 years old. I, when he took me in the spirit, when I stepped outside my body, and I don't care if someone don't believe this. I don't care. This is my testimony. I ain't, I ain't, I didn't steal this testimony off of nobody, whatever. This is my personal experience. This is my personal experience. When my father died when he was 45 five years old, the night before he died, he took me in the spirit. Jesus took me in the spirit. I went above the clouds, because I, outside my body, I went to a familiar place, which was a person at that time, this was their house, because he took me to an area, a dimension, where the kingdom was at. There was a man sitting on the couch in all white garment. I couldn't see his face. I didn't know who he was. The whole room was these angelic beings was stand, standing there. And then when I when I, I could even though I could see myself talking to him, but I couldn't in the dream I could not see the face, so it was blocked out. But I could see the man from the waist down who I was talking to, but I, I could not see his face. Not only did I did, could I not see his face, we we stood there was seen like for eternity for one hour. 
And then one thing, they, a portal came open. And guess who stepped through the portal? It was him. It was the one they described him in Revelation. Now, somebody going on blade, oh, da, 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 da. I seen Yeshua. But I, I was probably sitting with the image of his father, but I seen Yeshua. I know what he look, look like, going to look like when he come back to the earth. And that many times, time, could still etch in my memories. And at the time, when I, when, when, I, when Yeshua walks through the portal, this portal, like it was like he just come out boom. It was like it was it was it was so real because it was like it was like a day like it was and, shoo, and like it, just someone just stepped through through a dimen through a dimension. And I remember he had a smile. He had a beautiful smile. I remember it was raining because I I can feel it in my dream. I can feel the love and shock like I in, in my spirit knew that it was him. And I was so shocked and he just came over and gave me a hug. He hugged me. It, when he hugged me, he gave me a hug. I can't describe it, the love. And I wanted to go back, and, and, and I didn't want him to go, because I was like, I want to go with you, but he just, you know, it wasn't my time. But just let me know that everything was all going to be okay. I went, so after that, he turned back around. After, he tur after that happened, he turned back, and I, I went to go... Um, sit with the man at the couch who I could not see his face. Right, right then, but the, all the an, an, an angelic kingdom was in there. An angel came through another dimension. The angels said, announced that we have to go, that some, something Satan was come, calling something on another part of the earth. Now, how? Because I remember when 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 that happened. I remember I looked at the time and the time stood still. The clock stood still. For it seemed like it was at, it was at two in the morning. It stayed it, it didn't move, it didn't click. It, it it was it was I saw the time in eternity and it did not move. It did not move whatsoever. So after this discussion with, with the men and the angels and seeing Christ, I go back to the, I go back to where that dimension where I came from. I remember going back up over, and and I was soaring, and I, and, I came, and I saw all over my house. And it, and I lived on, at the time I lived in Youngstown on a street called Jefferson. And I saw how I I saw myself in the distance, and I came down, and I came down, and I and immediately I jumped up, and I could I mean I, I was so hyped. For the next couple of days. Now some people are going to say, hey. but again, it's my testimony. And that's something that I, I remember every year for the rest of my life. As I as I'm telling you, as I speak it to you. Now, that was one one case. Now I'm going to tell you how did I come across the satanic kingdom. It was two as there was, there was three three scenarios that came, like two scenarios that came with God. It was, it was one scenario. It was my fault. I did something egregious, and I would tell people, "Do not do this. Don't go get a Ouija board." The Ouija board opened up a dimension of hell. First, of how how I got introduced to it to the so-called associate mind. We no longer associate. We not even. We wouldn't, I wouldn't say we were really a friend at the time. But how we, we did it, you did it one other person. And, you know, with the candles and all that stuff like that and and all that crazy stuff. And then, you know, people that get, get, get on something like that, you start, really, you start hearing a dimension of laughter and voices. We both heard it. That was the one time. I did it myself. So I did this by myself the second time. So I had this Ouija board one, one night at my house. And um, I was it was I was get I was moving my emotions was hatred, prejudice, bigotry, 
the spirits knew this. So the spirit came as somebody who's big and, and precious and hatred. It was a spirit called Lamar. Never told nobody this. And, he, and, his, and so I said, Who are you? My name is. Da, 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 da. So I'm on this Ouija board. I'm, all this thing, shoo, I'm seeing, I'm feeling an unusual. It was summertime, an unusual cold air, and all this stuff was coming in. And I remember I was sitting there, and something touched me in a, in a certain area that I touched it with, in, in my male anatomy area. This is the truth. When I closed my eyes, I went because I, it kept me up all night. I closed my eyes. I seen a woman's face of a woman. She turned to me. She had white eyes. She had she was pale. She had all white hair, and she had a brown dress. She had a long like look like a brown dress or something like that. I don't know who that woman was. I don't know what that woman was. I seen this as I as soon as I close my eyes, I see her walk back into darkness, walk back into darkness. This is true. So you think I? And I'm still. It didn't really. It kind of freaked me out. But then again, I wasn't really. So oh, you know, you, you think it's your secondary mind until I did it in the daytime. And I so I took this board and I put it at the table in my living room. And I had a window over there near near it was light in the window. So I'm on this thing for, for a couple hours. All of a sudden I I felt the presence from at, at one seat, to another seat, I felt a cold presence. Then when I looked up near the window where the where the daylight was, it was a it was a seven foot demon and I could see his to the bottom of his leg it was an animal like animal legs and you could see the wings of this thing standing stand, standing up like this and, and I could see it see this thing hell could have possessed me that I could have been taken to hell that night I owe Jesus my life my, that's why I owe him because he saved me from that. The next day, I got scared. I ran. I, I went. I went over to a to a church that you know the, the this Catholic church. They kind of blew me off. Whatever, whatever. I said, "Can I talk to?" You? No, you just slammed the door in my face. Basically, like, wow. And so uh, I was scared to come back to the house. So I, I, it was a day. The next day, I came back and I came back and uh, that night I couldn't sleep. Even when my mom came home from work, the next day um, I was in the kitchen. Here, here's where the miracle come in. You know, I, there's a sense you open up a door, and you know, and it's like when you do stuff like that, you open up some type of door. I can I don't know what it is. My back was completely turned. But while my back was completely turned, I saw an angel. Clear as day, clear as day, like it was right now. I tried to turn to catch him with my natural eye, but I couldn't catch him. But I can see him behind me through, I don't know what that vision is, that I've seen him clearly, like, I'm, like a day like it is today. He, he was sitting over, I had a chair, he, he was sitting over there on a stool, and when he knew that I looked up at him, he just smiled, and he just nodded his head. And so I was kind of like, "Whoa!" <laughs> I like, "Whoa!" I said, and so I seemed like I tried to turn around, and look at him. He was gone, but I can see him. It it what that's the vision. I don't know what that vision is called. The second time. That very night when that happened, before that happened, when the demonic spirits was there, they left. And how I knew, two angels showed up in my my that my house where my mom and I lived at. In the area is it was it was dark. And so in this 
in this area, the angels, you can see that their background is bluish. It's, blu it's like a very bluish background, and it, they had to be seven feet, they had about six and, ha six and a half, seven feet tall. They was, and I just stood there, and I didn't see with my natural eye, but, but I could see the form. That was the year in the 90s, I tell you. I don't know, something about them 90s, man, that everybody with movies was talking about angels and, and I, <laughs> about God's kingdom, God's kingdom angels. Now, there were fallen angels people talking about, but there was, for some reason, I don't know what it was about the 90s, they made movies and shows that were touched by an angel, uh, movies about angels, you know, blaspheming God's angels, some of them were blaspheming God's angels like Michael and Gabriel, some movies are blas blaspheming, and then you have people that were making good movies about angels. So all of a sudden, it was just a year. I mean, I remember um, um, it being at, being, one time I was in my apartment, and I'm going to go back to the good angels. So I'm in my apartment, I'm sitting down, and all of a sudden, you, I don't know why, I kind of got to like a, a pray prayer. You know how you kind of like nod your head or you like you going to sleep, and so as I nod my head, I can see, and I can't naturally see, but I'm, it, it the sense that you can see in front of you, like I can look at this angel clear as day. He was standing right in front of me, and he just kind of touched my head, and I'm like, and I try to. And I was kind of scared to look and see what's going to catch you with my natural eye, but I didn't catch him with my natural eye. But he was there in my apartment. That was one time. A third time, God's angels, when I saw his, one of his angels was, we was at a prison. My mother's, her, her, her deceased husband, he's deceased now. This is back in about 89, 90. We go, we go take, you know how they do, they, they take a picture, right, with the inmates and stuff, with your families. They say, hey, you want to remember? Because his son was, I think he was a kid at the time, and he was like my stepdad. He's not my, my like my real dad. Um, so we take a picture with the background, right? So I'm looking at the, so I didn't see his picture till like a couple of years later. So when his mother, who is now deceased, had his picture, I looked at the picture I wish I could have brought it home. I looked at this picture, and I see us. I see his son. I'm on. I'm on the right, left side. His son's on the right side. He's he's in the middle. He he's taller than us because I'm like five, nine and a half. His son's like at the time about five one. This angel had to be like six. He's like six feet. He had to be like seven feet tall. His wingspan was like over us. I mean, you could see his his wing. I mean, just stand, stand up in the background. And I had to like kind of shake, I kind of had to shake my eyes and I said, and, 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 and sure enough, he, the, the camera can catch things that the human eye can't catch. This angel stood over us in the background. He, he's there, his because he's like 6'1", this angel was towering over him. I mean, he, this is a tall angel, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my goodness!" That that was another time I I, I seen it, and then it got one of God's kingdom. So you see, um, the basically is that those, those king, God's kingdom, through His Son Yeshua, better known as Jesus, they exist. The satanic kingdom, they exist. Don't let people tell you that they don't exist. They exist. Trust me. That word, they, they, they try to dismiss the Bible. Yeah, there might be certain things that was kind of mistranslated, but the Bible is real. Think about the think about it. The, the Torah, they had to get information from the Torah. The, the Bible got information from the Torah, just like it, the Quran got things from, from the Torah. So you so so the Quran and the Bible have the same similar stories in the Torah. Maybe certain it may be translation difference, but but it pretty much agree about Mary, about Abraham, about 
different individuals. Even though in the Quran, they mention the same thing. So I don't know where these people are coming from with this with this mess. Why is it? Why is it? Then you look in the, in the Bible and it mentions certain things. Then you mention it in, in the Torah, it mentions certain things. I don't see how anybody can sit up there and dispel. And because I, I, the reason why I said is because I heard someone talk about, oh, the Bible is full of allegories. No, it's not. It's real. Yeshua is real. Jesus is real. The people in the Bible is real. It's artifacts over there as we speak. They still digging up and they dug up a parts of Turkey and near Israel. That that validate that these people did exist on the planet. Even the prison where Paul was locked up still there. So how in the world that 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 and these people that don't believe and they want to go on this theory, well, that's the white man's. No, it's not. It's fast. I, I, I watch geographic. They pull out the, the areas in different parts of Israel and where they took actually where these individuals walked the grounds and they have dug in areas in the ground where they, they found cities and things and tablets. So the Bible is real. It's just maybe certain things that was translated, maybe certain things were left out, but, but the Old Testament as well as the New Testament is real. Is real. And for anybody, don't let someone tell you that try to tell you otherwise. Because they they come to this conclusion, they come and get all this super knowledge from some history from before, uh, that goes back thousands, thousands it it was around. It, they they real, from the, the um, Solomon to David, to Moses to Abraham. They was around. They that the towns, the villages, they digging up areas. There's pro, there was even an area where Solomon Gomorrah was that's no longer there. So how are you gonna sit and tell that the Bible don't exist when it when it's still there's certain remnants even where uh, Noah's wife and they still it's a pillar of salt. She's this, that when she turned and saw that, that that figure is still there. How are you gonna sit there and say that the Bible don't exist? That's crazy. When you can see the remnants, if you look on geographic and look on it, you can see and they can show you where different areas where they once walked and where these places was the, the ancient Roman cities, the areas where Jesus walked in place. So don't believe anybody tells you the word ain't real. If that was the case, then and it was the only thing that they, but it was real. And it was some things that even though they allowed us to read, and it was some things in the Bible that, of course, I believe that's true that the Roman Catholic Church took some certain things out of it, certain scriptures out, but it's real. And the things that the demonic possession and people having the same type of diseases that we have today, they, they, we probably, they probably were different. People had ep, epilepsy, they had um, schizophrenia. You can see in the scriptures. You can see this in the scriptures. How are you going to sit up there and say that, that, that and, and the dumb in spirit and things like that? How are you going to sit up there and say that it don't, when you see people still have these spirits to the day? They still suffer the same mental illnesses today that they did over 6,000 years ago during the time when Christ was, was walking on the earth and before he walked the earth. Don't, don't believe that because the Bible is real. And some of it has been delivered because of stuff because generational in our generational bloodline. The Bible is real. I seen a young man that gave a testimony and I saw the bullet that, that that he was shot straight in the head and they took up the area of his skull and, and that it, he probably was supposed to be blind blind in it and he still and he survived with a with a with a cake with a big old dent in his head. I, the Bible was real. I seen the glory of God come over a person when 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 the uh, when it been in the person when a room where the glory came in and and covered a young man that was in a coma. And he couldn't even he he could move, but only when 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 his cousin played worship music, even though he couldn't move, but you can can sense that his eyes it, it was it was understanding 
he was reaching, communicate, communicating, even though he couldn't physically communicate to us, but he heard that he was, he was listening to the music. Boom, 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 boom. I have seen some, some things that some people that couldn't walk, in one case a person couldn't walk couldn't, for months, all of a sudden by worship and praise an anointing came and what they couldn't do for months, years, they got up and walked. There are people still getting up from miracles today. Don't let people tell you that. Not all that stuff. But some stuff is some people rig it, and it's, there's some people that really do experience miracles. There are people that are still being raised from the dead as we speak. There are people being healed from viruses and the most deadly viruses on the planet, and still wake up in the land and live it. Don't let nobody tell you this. Don't let nobody tell tell you that. Oh, that's just an old that that old stuff. It old stuff. My my butt. It's happening today. Is what you believe and praise. See, church was not supposed to just get together and just, you know, just take all the knowledge. Some people go to church and go out there and go to the hospitals. Some people go up to church and they go to the nursing homes. Some people go to church and they come out and they go into the into the woods and go minister to the people. Some people take and, and spirits and signs and wonders and miracles. Some people have prayer right there on the street. Don't you tell me. You don't. You can't have me believe that when I, I see evidence of it. Some people they didn't. They were completely homeless and poor, and all of a sudden, bam! God put them in a house. Some people are experiencing things that you have, because you choose not, not to believe. And some people, um, some people choose not to, and that's why maybe that's why. They, they, they didn't happen. But when you saw an intercessor in prayer, and I know prayer works, I've seen evidence of prayer that works. I've seen the evidence of it. I've seen people who are alcoholics. I've seen people that was uh, alternative lifestyles. I knew that I knew a man that was was a gay man. That my mother, my mother I knew grew up gay. He dabbled. He dabbled, He had a wife and kidneys and slowly the enemy took him down that, that lifestyle for about five or ten years then when God came to him in a dream he came back and got deliverance of it and came back and got got deliverance of, of that spirit of homosexuality and, 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 and came back to got a wife I seen this happen to a woman that was a she was a basically she was a lesbian she lived a lesbian life, lifestyle, for and I knew because we we was I volunteered at a playhouse, but and she was Jewish, but she came back to Yeshua and got her husband and left that lifestyle. I seen it. It can be done. It can be done. I seen people get healed. I seen had to go in, in areas where um, somebody, you know, that they, there was a spirit running through the house, <laughs> and that that wasn't that wasn't easy. It's like you know, and you had to go, you had to go and, and have enough faith and with the anointing of God to deal with something like that. I've experienced things. And you know, and if someone listens to this video, they might think I'm full of crap. They might think, oh, I, I don't care. Because when you experience something like the things that I'm telling you on this video, your life ain't never the same. You don't look at, you don't look at just church as just a building, a, a denomination, association. When you walk with the word and you and you walk along somebody, seeing the signs and wonders that somebody has favored with God, and God brings them to strangers and strangers who was under addiction and, it, and you walking with Christ and you and this person walking with Christ and you start seeing miracles, bondages being broken. They, they, they were going through alcoholic, mental, emotional, spiritual, spiritual struggles. Your life ain't the same. Your life is not the same person. Don't let these people tell you. 
that. It's, it's the I want to, and let me get this straight, because the name works. The name Yeshua in Jesus name work. People try to dispel that, but hey, if the name still got power and deliverance, if the name still got healing and deliverance, if the name can still break bondage and break free, it's still then which where's what's this dispute about? And see, it's one thing when you go out there and, and say it. See, church was never supposed to, supposed to just be in the building and just act like we're a bunch of gang members. Like, you know, we come to my clique and you, you go to your clique. We do this thing and we can outdo each other, out, out debate each other, out competition each other. When well, you have a whole world of people dying out here. No. What Christ asked through his, what the Father asked through his son Christ that given us his spirit is to go out there and go and go serve the uh, go tell about the gospel. Number one thing, and and, they, and, and he will bring them in a time because they're gonna be in a season of hurting and want to know why are they in this bondage? There are people that feel like they cursed and they walked the earth feel like they didn't feel worthy to walk this planet. That's who Jesus was trying to get to. That's who Yeshua is trying to get to, saying. No matter how bad your sin is, no matter what you into, no matter what you in, and I, I was a sinner just like you, and I'm, that's what I'm saying. I I was out there in the clubs. I I was out there trying to flaunt do what what I've learned bad behavior. Not to the point that it cost me my freedom, or it almost cost me my life, but it almost cost me my freedom. But just the mercy of God spared my life. And the reason why it could have caused me my freedom because being around the wrong type of people, it could have cost me my freedom. It could have probably cost at times that it could have cost me my life. But he has so much mercy on me. And I'm 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 blessed to be at the age of my age of 54 years old. Because a lot of people didn't make it to see my age, that's in my generation. And you've seen the millennial generation, the the other generation, they're not even seeing, then they, there's some people not even seeing 30, 40, let alone 40, they're not even seeing 30, 20. This is a reality. So, and they need to know the truth. They need to know the reality. They need to know that you, you're you not going to be young forever. We used to go on, we in the times we can't do what we used to do. You can you can party all night and, and come back to church and then you can't do that no more. You can't you can't straddle the fence. Cause right now, the enemy is raising. And I'm not giving a devil the devil props. But he's he's looking to take people out. And it's and it's by the mercy of God. Does he let the death angel come and take them out? Or does he let, let them live another day on the earth? This is real. Death is real. Like taxes, they're real. And you need to know this. And no one on YouTube is not going to tell you this. Death is real. Illnesses is real. Destruction is real. De being in death is real. All the most horrible things you can go through as a human being is real. Don't let nobody tell you that the word isn't, isn't re real. Don't let somebody tell you that Yeshua isn't real. Don't let somebody tell you that the body... That, that all that's just something that happened in history. It's happening now. And they don't know that God, because his hand of mercy is, is being lifted. Why are you seeing so many people leaving this world? Young. Even young as children. Why you, you, you think this is you think that this this is unreal? And what when you see their body go to the ground, you better hope they're in eternity with him. Because not everybody, not everybody on the earth gonna go to heaven. That's a fact. And I don't care. You, it's not not just the people that don't know about Jesus, but even some people that been playing around with Jesus. That's a fact. And when you get when you get and, and you don't believe me, get into a fast anointing and pray and worship and seek God and see what here is being seek. Tell me, I'm telling you the truth. Not everybody gonna make it to the kingdom. See, we guys, we don't know what nobody don't know what tomorrow may bring them. 
You may think you're going to live another day, another month, another year. You don't know. Because only he knows. He got the clock of time and eternity. So, don't let someone let you lose your soul of salvation on foolishness and unbelief. It don't matter how much power you got. Even if the devil grants you power, he's going to require your soul. If he grants you richness, he's going to require your soul. And he's not going to give you the luxury things like God is going to give, give a person. You know what's going to happen to people, even the people who are witches, warlocks, paganists, and people that oppose everything against God, as well as the people who played around with God's word, even the ones who were supposed to be called, but they, they choose to walk to to their own self idol idolship. Do you know what's going to really ha happen when they when they got stand before Jesus and Jesus sent people and he sent people to come for them, come over, times winding up, eternity. You know what's going to happen to them? Once the books is open, psh, that's. Some will go to the second throne, die the second death, they go to the throne. What the ones that turned to, turned against the word, turned against Christ, along with these the ones that didn't believe in Christ and didn't believe in the word, but they, they stay with, with, with this other kingdom. They go into the pit of hell. And then when they go down to the pit of hell, they go into like a fire with him. So that's something for a witch and a warlock to think about. So they're going to do all the stuff that they can do in, in for a person who's, who's being disobedient, leading people to hell. Even if you're, whether they're a so-called pastor or bishop, whatever. They need to think about it. You're dealing with souls. And when you come against, when you start dealing, dealing with souls, you step in his arena. You step in the Father's arena. Because he take that very seriously. Ain't no time to sugarcoat things. Death is in the land. It's not just happening. It's happening all throughout this world. Not just here in the United States, but all throughout the world. And people are losing their life, leaving their life. Boom, 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 boom. Could be the virus. It could be a weather disaster. You don't know when you're talking. You could be you, people are dying in their sleep. Death comes. Yeah. You can walk out your house, somebody can shoot you. This is how real it is. If God chooses you to live, you live. Survive the bullet. If you don't live, that's it. So for those people that don't want to believe, that'd be my suggestion to you. Ain't nobody gonna force you to believe. Nobody gonna kiss your butt. You choose. You might not like this video, but at the end of the day, truth is truth. Cause someone told you, you heard it on a video, or someone told you personally. To get your life right. You kept playing around. And time is up. And your time is about to leave this world. My suggestion to you. Is renounce and repent. You don't repent. It's too late. That's the message. And I know it won't get popular. With a lot of people. But if I can reach one or two people. And God let this video reach one or two people. To hear my story. And hear, hear the reality of what happened. And everything I, it is accomplished. Because I know it ain't going to reach a thousand people. Because the devil is over the airwaves. He won't, He don't want to hear this video get out to the masses. He don't like messages like this. You got people, people that control the airwaves. Come on, entertain us. I don't, don't want to hear that. Again. It's not what you don't like. It's, it's the reality. It's not what you don't want. It's reality. Like I said, I could have been gone off this earth a long time ago. But it was him that left me around. It was him that validated me. It was him that if anybody, if, if this whole world turned against me, I'm cool, I, I, I'm to the point I'm cool with that. Because you see the you see the heart of man. But as long as I, I, if I'm pleasing and, and loving, he's loving me. 
That's all that matters. If I don't have a billion dollars in my account, it, uh, it's all that matters. If it, if it keep me away, protect me from the cold, the winters, the spring, the viruses, and keep me from harm away from man and from natural disaster, I have everything. If, if another human being don't say that they, if my family turn against me, I, have, I still have everything. And it's gonna get to the point like, it's, it's cool. You gotta face death, then you have to go. Because when you see how ugly this world is right now, it's ugly. It's getting going to get worse and worse and worse. So it's, it's, it's okay. I used to be scared. You said, man, what, 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 what if, if, if you with him, you have everything. And he's saying people that's going to, who, who are your friends one minute, they're going to turn against you. Because he's going to show you what the light is, what, what they were really behind. And they could be the people who you think was the, was the closest to you. They could be like a, a bonding with you. I've seen this throughout my life. People I once knew, they turned against me. People that they don't want to be, they don't want to be seen acknowledge me no more. I know it's like to be not be seen, don't want to be acknowledged. People want, then out or they got their miracles, they got their blessings, and they they only want want know you no more. I've experienced that people that's supposed to be Christians, supposed to be my brothers in Christ. It's not just the people that's not in the world. It's like that. It's some people that even both be in Christ. See, God tests things. Anybody that live a, live life, you, you you live a certain time in life, you see. The reality hurts when you see it. If people turn against you, you would never imagine to turn against you. Everything ain't just black and white. It's just gray. But uh, I just want to get this out. Uh, this is my little live stream, free live stream. <laughs> Some people are like, oh, this guy talks too long. But hey, I got to tell you the truth, man. And like I said, it, it may not get popular with people. Some people like to me, I know they're going to, I look at the views, the algorithm. But hey, at the end of the day, if, if I reach somebody who thought about they was the only person on this planet that they thought about leaving this planet before their time and I saved their soul that's all what matters and I pray to God that God let them see this video and hear my story because there was a time in my life I felt like that and think something wrong with you it's like and you, you think a, you go to a deep dark in your mind that that you just want to go. And even though there's, there's, there's people around me that love me, don't get me wrong, but it's, it's something that the enemy tries to keep you in bondage. Make you think that it's, they don't. Because you've seen so much phony and fakeness over time. And you, fo and you focus on people, and the thing about this, you focus on people who you really want to get to know but they don't really want to get to know you. And that could be people in your own family, people you grew up with, your own friends, people in your church. But as long as God knows you, He'll bring He'll bring a family to you. He'll be that family to you when others don't want to be family to you. He'll be that He'll be that best friend when other people don't want to be that friend. He'll be everything to you. He'll be your father your uncle, your advisor, because he knows what you stand in need of. That's why I love Jesus. That's why I love Yeshua. And I owe him more than everything in my life because not only he saved my life, he saved my soul. That's why I, I would never, I would want, never want to turn on, I would never want to turn on him because I love him. And even though sometimes I, I should be fasting like I should and certain things, but I, deep down I, I love him. And in fact, he got my heart. Before I can allow someone who to take up to be a wife right now, he got my heart. 
and if you're a man and woman, it should be the same way. Until someone come with the complete wholeness of loving you like he do, that's who you should, should. And it's not always in an appearance. It's not always with this. It's not only with how articulate and, and what, what they got and what, if they live in, live in a mansion. That doesn't matter what their name is in the land. It doesn't matter how many people, it doesn't matter. Do they have a love of Christ? That's what matters. If they ain't got the love of Christ, they don't love you. They, they got half of a love. <laughs> half of a love. They love you, but they got a limit on their love. Your friends can have a limit love. Your family can have a limit on their love. People at your church can have a limit on their love. Your co-workers. But God will never limit his love on you. Because it's, it's bigger than my arms that stretch. You may not feel it. You may not feel like sometimes he don't answer. But he's there. He may, it might be a time and season when he, he will answer you. He will grant your prayers. Sometimes he might give things. And bring out the right time and the right season. But know that you need him. He don't need you. You need him. We need him. I need him. I need him every day. Without him, I'm nobody. I'm just James Thomas. And even with the experiences I've had with God, I'm still him. I still need him. Even with the knowledge that I've learned in Revelation Scripture, some of the things that I've learned from other people, even some things he showed me, I still need him. I still learn it. I still want to be childlike faith and learn more. Because I don't know the, the, the different dimensions of God. I don't know the things that he knows. Whatever he chooses to share, but even if he chooses to share it, I'm still going to be humble with it. Because I know we ever forever learn. And that's what's wrong with people. Even people that's well known that God's blessed their ministry. And they, and they got too, woo, they got way big headed. You well known pastors, bishops, prophets, and all that. They got too big headed. Now they turn themselves, and that's, they, they come into a downfall like Satan. And they forget, when they, anytime you ask something, you come to the one that, 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 that able to give the life, to give the glory, and give the honor to, that saves you from your sins. Always give him the reference. No matter how high you go on the ladder, no matter how high your ministry cry, always give him the glory. Always give him the glory. Because without him, we're nothing. Both kingdoms know that. The only reason why the, the devil can't get to you, his kingdom can't get to you, is because of Yeshua, because of the blood. That's a fact. Because he protect you, said. Because even the Bible said, "I can't, I can't." Well, you look at my servant Job. Well, well, what is it? I can't get to Job. He, Satan even told God this, so his kingdom couldn't even get to Job until God put a set a plan in motion. But he said, "Do not take his life. You can t touch anything else of, of Job, but you can't take his life." And Job persevered. And if Job pre persevered, then we can persevere. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, ladies and gentlemen. And again, that's my true story. This is the real. This is the real me. The real personal side of me, my struggles, my journeys, what I've been through. Share if you want to share with somebody. They care. They think it's too boring. It's not meant for the people. They go, oh, he's lame, he's born. It ain't meant for them. It's meant for the ones that, that see through the thing spiritually. Because some people ain't going to get it. No matter how, what walk of life they come from. You have to be spirit. You have to be filled with the spirit to understand. And you have to be at that time be willing to hear at a point that you're being broken to understand. They're the only people that's going to understand this message. They're the only people. These other people that's 
caught up in this and caught up in that, they won't say it. They just, oh, he's a foolish man. He's a fool. He don't know what he's talking about. I don't believe him. Well, it, it, okay, you don't really have to believe. It's just, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't care. It's my, my testimony. I experienced the Bible. I, I know the Bible's real. You don't want to believe it, it's on you. And those, those are people who will watch this video and come past it. Oh, and let's do it. Oh, well. It's, it's, it, you don't believe in Jesus, it's, it's on you. You don't believe in the Father, you don't believe in the Son, hey, it's on you. Don't believe in the Spirit, that's on you. I don't gonna make you do nothing. But when time comes, you better, when, 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 when things come, when things are something that you can't go out, out of your control, you'll find out when, when things are so overwhelming, humanly overwhelming, you, you're you going to be tested. You'll find out. You'll find you, you're going to need him. Trust me. Everybody do. Things can go well and, and round around it, and you can be as manly man and as womanly womanly. Strong. I'm strong. But at some point, yeah. But how much can you take? And how much he let the enemy put on you? How much pressure, pressure? Everybody has a pressure point. They don't tell you that. <laughs> they don't tell you that part, do they? Yep. So my name is James. Hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, you guys take it easy. Be blessed. And I hope this message gets to someone. And live another day. Be blessed another day. And remember, your value to somebody. Your value. If you, in fact, don't feel like your value in this world, your value to the one that put you in your mother's womb. Your jewel, your treasure, your blessing. Even though you might not feel like you're a blessing. You may not like you look like you're a blessing. Then whatever your appearance is. But there's something beyond your appearance that God finds you worthy. There's something about you. He created you to be a create you to be a blessing. Or something. Be, be a blessing. Be a blessing. That's what it is. You are a blessing. Every one of you. Whether you're young, you're never too old. As long as you got breath in this body, you're a blessing to somebody. Just like I am. You have a purpose. And he has a destiny for you. Take care.